Hi guys, Topo here, director of the media literacy documentary Beware of Images. If you supported our first Kickstarter campaign, you'll be happy to know that Beware of Images opened to sold out audiences in Vancouver and has been screened in film festivals and educational institutions in Canada, the United States, Mexico and Europe. It's also been available through Vimeo On Demand. This means the film is slowly recuperating its production costs, but it also means that it currently sits behind a paywall that limits its reach. I am convinced that media literacy is the defining issue of our time, the one issue that shapes our views and reactions to all other issues. As a teacher for the past 15 years, I have experienced the transformative power of education. Media literacy education is particularly eye-opening as it helps us understand the source of many of our cultural prejudices and misconceptions. This in turn encourages us to engage with media in a more conscious, analytical and inquisitive manner. With our reality becoming increasingly mediated, this skill has become essential to our personal and collective well-being. That's the reason why I'm asking for your support once again. I am determined to tear down the paywall and release Beware of Images for free. This will immediately put the film in the hands of parents, educators and students all around the world and will help ignite a broader discussion about the role of media in our lives. I am still $200,000 away from recuperating my personal investment in the film. But I have decided that once this Kickstarter campaign reaches its $1 goal, the documentary will be released for free through a Creative Commons license. I have also set a stretch goal of $200,000 for those of you who'd like to join me in sponsoring this initiative. So go watch the film, and if you find it valuable and worth sharing, please come back and contribute by choosing one of our awesome rewards. The film is currently in English with optional Spanish subtitles. My intention is to have it translated into other languages and to create a page where every chapter of the film includes teaching resources, guides, bibliography, and other extras. I also intend to donate all of the original material created specifically for the film to the Wikimedia Foundation. Since the project's original goal was to generate awareness and improve our media environment, I will confess that there is another powerful reason why I want to tear down the paywall. Releasing the film for free will put an end to my Facebook marketing efforts to sell it. Even though the Beware of Images Facebook page has gathered over 250,000 followers, I refuse to contribute any more content, time or money to a platform that in my opinion is quickly becoming one of the most destructive media technologies in history. When I started the page in 2011, it seemed to be an exciting and effective way of communicating with an interested audience. But as Mr. Zuckerberg made a series of fateful decisions, things gradually went downhill. Facebook's secret collaboration with the NSA raised a lot of eyebrows. But it is the platform's underlying architecture that is truly disturbing. By implementing a monetization strategy based entirely on advertising and data mining, Facebook has a vested interest in clearly and systematically fragmenting its user base and has been effectively programmed to achieve exactly that. Any company that is in the business of categorizing the world's population in order to serve governments, marketers and advertisers must compel its users to clearly define and disclose their ideological and commercial preferences. And in that respect, it is the most militant and polarizing content that yields the best and fastest actionable information. Let me explain. If you were served comprehensive and nuanced content on your feed, it would take your attention away from Facebook for long periods of time. Of course, the platform prefers the intervals between interactions to be short. But that's not what really worries Facebook. The real problem is that the more comprehensive and nuanced the content, the less likely it is to clearly expose a user's stance on a subject. On the other hand, Reacting to simplistic content designed to clearly reinforce or antagonize your beliefs will quickly and accurately place you into well-defined groups. The simpler and more absolute the content, 
the faster and more accurately it will generate our personality profiles. So it's in Facebook's financial interest to saturate our feeds with polarizing memes and slogans. In fact, the platform has been intentionally designed to marginalize any scholarly work that may generate slow and ambiguous signals. Actually, the more that our preferences and prejudices are not just exposed, but actively reinforced by the system, the more effectively it can categorize and monetize our behavioral patterns. In that respect, Facebook thrives on segmentation and division. It is important to emphasize that this segmentation is not an unintended consequence of the system, but its actual and active purpose. Facebook's financial success depends on it, and it has created a seriously detrimental vicious cycle, a feedback loop where an increasingly polarized society creates increasingly polarizing content, which in turn continues to polarize the society that consumes it. But while the behavioral manipulators, which are Facebook's paying customers, profit from this systematic segmentation of society, Facebook users like you and I, which are the product being sold, are only rewarded in quantified attention. The randomized way in which this attention gets rationed and administered makes Facebook very addictive. But the use of attention as the platform's main currency has another negative consequence. Just like it happens at school, where a mean and disruptive bully tends to get more attention than a contemplative child, in Facebook's attention economy, it is the loudest, most divisive voices that get rewarded and amplified. Facebook has also chosen to treat all content as advertising. Whether you are an altruistic page trying to generate awareness about important issues, a journalist trying to inform the public, a multinational trying to sell a product, or a foreign agent trying to influence an election, Facebook makes no distinctions. They all have the potential to reach millions of users, but only if they can afford to promote their posts. This has effectively turned Facebook into a pay-to-play platform, where, like in traditional media, money equals speech. The recent Cambridge Analytica scandal was, in a way, a gift for Facebook. It gave Mark Zuckerberg the excuse to further limit the reach of all pages, making it even harder for publishers to organically appear on a follower's feed, and thus making it almost mandatory to use Facebook's pay-to-play imposition. This has become a monopolistic extortion racket, which increasingly benefits only the behavioral manipulators. As it stands, their voices will become more and more prevalent, while educational and community pages will inevitably lose activity and disappear. I am not sure what will become of the Beware of Images Facebook page, but considering that we all have become Facebook's unwitting employees, generating the content and interaction that power its economic engine, I invite you to join me in a general social media strike. Since deleting our social media presence simply renders us invisible, let's instead join our voices in a collective protest by posting this image to our profiles while refusing to supply Facebook with what it needs most to survive, our information. Let's urge all of the social media platforms to find a new monetization strategy, one that prioritizes the public good over the social manipulators. In short, your contribution will support two initiatives. One, you will help sponsor the Creative Commons license to release Beware of Images for free in as many languages as possible and with extra resources for educators and students. And two, you will help shape a healthier social media environment by taking a much needed stance against what is rapidly becoming a major negative force in our societies. This is a long overdue effort that will require time and determination, but one that must be undertaken if we are to restore tolerance, respect, and civil social discourse. Thanks in advance for your support, and please help spread the word.